I'd like to continue talking about primate behavior. How can we possibly learn about early human behavior? Things that happened five or six million years ago. Well, modern day primate behavior studies are seen as models for early human behavior. When present humans have a behavior and our closest living relatives also have that behavior, then we think that our distant shared ancestor probably also had that behavior. That is considered to be an homologous behavior, which is why we study chimpanzees and bonobos, whose lineage split from humans about five to six million years ago. Or sometimes we study other, less recently related primates, who now live in the same kind of environment that we think the early humans lived in. That is called analogous behavior and is why we study baboons. What can I say about baboons? There are five species. Some of them live in the savannas of East and South Africa today. Baboons live in troops that are based on a network of social alliances. And the alliances of friendships include female to female friendships, female to male, and male to male. Members of a troop have different social positions. And social positions within baboon troops are based on experience, skills, and their ability to gain and influence allies or friends. The stable group is a female and her relatives. Competition is among females over resources for the family of each. Males make overtures toward females in estrus, but females choose who they mate with. Males do have a lot of power and they protect the troop. What do we know about chimpanzee behavior? Well, every individual has a place in the society's dominance hierarchy. Males, generally speaking, are ranked above females and higher ranked males get the best feeding spots and females. But females are also hierarchically ranked. Group membership is fluid, yet there is a sense of group identity and territory. We call this a fusion-fission pattern. Strong family bonds center around a female and her children. Members of a family unit protect and care for one another. Care also extends outside the family unit. Many adults aid or protect youngsters. Chimpanzees sometimes hunt for meat, preferring small pigs, antelopes, monkeys, and baboons. Meat is the one food that chimps share. They appear to use it as social capital. They eat the meat raw. Years of observation of chimp behavior in the wild indicates that chimp behavior is overall flexible and adaptable. Much chimp behavior is learned, and there is variation in behavior between groups. Obviously, chimps can invent new behaviors and pass them on socially. Some researchers call these differences customs, or they think of the groups as having different cultures. What about the bonobo, which is estimated to have branched off from the chimpanzee lineage about 930,000 years ago? Like the chimp, the bonobos have a dominance hierarchy, but little aggression is involved in establishing the hierarchy in males. Female hierarchy appears to be based on seniority, and the females may dominate males. The mother's bond with children remains strong. Mothers nurse and care for young for about five years and give birth about every five to six years. They also follow the fusion fish and group behavior. Groups of about 100 bonobos sleep in the same area, but during the day they split into smaller groups to forage for food. They are mainly frugivorous, that is, they prefer to eat fruit. Females are always sexually receptive, and sexual, sexual activity is used as social glue to prevent violence, ease tension, offer greeting, reconcile, or for reassurance. If you've watched the uh, TED Talk, then you know that few bonobos are on exhibit at 
zoos and in part because of their frequent sex, which is unusually face-to-face. -face. Bonobos are more peaceful and gregarious than are chimpanzees. They share food, including meat, but they rarely hunt. When they do, they hunt individually for very small game, such as squirrels or tiny antelope. Chimpanzees make and use tools to obtain food or water. Here you see a chimpanzee closely watched by a youngster cracking open something by hitting one rock against it while it's sitting on top of another rock. Bonobos make and use tools, but never for obtaining food. Anthropologists also turn to what is called ethnographic analogy. And that's the study of a contemporary or historically recorded human group to use as a model for interpretation of early humans. So in addition to looking at relatively unrelated primates such as baboons for analogies for possible human behavior, we look to modern or historic human societies who live without much technology. In particular, we have targeted hunter-gatherer and forager groups who rely on wild game and plants. Now, all humans around the world lived this way until about 12,000 years ago. In recent history, these have included the Eskimo or Inuit, Australian Aborigines, some Philippine groups, and the Kung San of the Southern Africa Kalahari Desert. I can tell you some generalizations about hunter-gatherers. Foraging societies who depend on wild food tend to be egalitarian. That is, there are statuses among different people, but these are based on your age, your gender, whether you're married or not, and the talents that you have. Sharing and kinship are important. Foraging bands made up of related family units average 25 to perhaps 30 people in size. And the nuclear family is the mother, father, and their offspring. Often, people have home ranges, bands have home ranges, and seasonal cycles. And bands may have flexible membership. Usually, the men hunt, often cooperatively. And meat is shared, sometimes through elaborate cultural rules and rituals. Usually the women gather and take care of the children, normally for her, child, for her family. Women often supply most of the daily food to the family, whereas meat is an occasional treat. So what behavioral similarities do we see among baboons, chimpanzees, bonobos, and human hunting, gathering, foraging societies? That is, what sorts of behaviors might we expect to see among the earliest humans five or six million years ago? We see a social structure built around a family unit. Mother-child bond is especially strong. We see mutual aid within a group and long-term friendships. Defense of the group. Presence of a home range or territory and recognition of individuals in the differential standings within the group, which can change during an individual's lifetime. So perhaps we might expect these behaviors or adaptations in the earliest humans. Don't forget, this coming Monday, your assignment is to watch a one-hour wonderful movie one of my very favorite movies. It's about Jane Goodall. The name of the movie is Among the Wild Chimpanzees. And under assignments on Blackboard, under videos, V5, you'll find the voice thread questions. So you need to budget one and a half to two hours to make this, to complete this assignment. It's worth 10 points. And our next synchronous class is next Wednesday, talking about the basics of genetics.